Historians estimated that it started around the 1300s. Ileife is the place where most Yoruba kingdoms is said to have come from, and its founder, Odudua, was the first king. He had many sons, one of them Oromiyo. One day, Oromiyo angered with the way the neighboring kingdom insults their grandfather, Odudua. He decided to launch an attack as a punishment against them. He seek the help of his brother and they combined their forces. On their way, the two brothers quarreled and they split up. Oromiyo's force was too small to carry out the attack, so he wandered in the wilderness around River Ninja. When he got to somewhere around Busa today, he was welcomed by a chief who later provided a large snake with a charm on his neck to him. The chief also gave him some instructions and information on what to do with it. Not long after, Romeo and his followers continued on their journey, still not knowing where they are heading. But this time, they were led by the snake that has a charm on his throat. They followed this big snake through the thick forest for some months. One day, they got to a place where the snake stopped suddenly. Since the snake is their lead, they stopped around it as well, and they were there for seven days. On the seventh day, the snake gradually entered the ground, till they couldn't see it again. That particular site it happened is called Ajaka today, and Oromiyo founded the first Oyo in that vast area according to the instruction which he had been given by the chief who provided the snake. Oromiyo became the first king with the title Alafin, translating to the owner of the palace. The new kingdom faced few problems from Bogu, another kingdom already near it, but soon overcome them. After some time, Oromiyo had to return to Ilife his paternal home. He crowned one of his sons called Ajaka as a laughing and left. After he left, Ajaka was disposed by the chiefs who felt he is weak because he was too peaceful. So his younger brother, a magician called Shongo, was crowned in his place. Shongo took control and walled many existing settlements around Oyo beating fire, causing thunder and lightning. He reigned for seven years, after which he committed suicide, after having disagreements with his subordinate warrior and having mistakenly burned down the palace in the process. His worshippers claimed he ascended to heaven and worshipped him till today. Ajaka returned to the throne, this time not as a peaceful king, but as a tyrant. He was a terror, both in and out of Oyo. He seized territories and his successor, Kuri, continued the expansion. Experts estimate the site of this Oyo to be around 30,000 acres, and probably it was the most populated kingdom at that time when compared to its neighbors like Bogu and Numpi. Oyo became a threat other kingdoms around it, and this went on for some generations. Their neighbors, the Numpe, were tired of this, and so kept upgrading their military by buying, rearing, and training with horses and long spears. During the time of a king called Onigogi, Oyo launched one of their raids to Numpe, and to the surprise of Allah of Onigogi, they were repelled. The Numpe would not stop there, as they kept pushing into Oyo, defeating the Oyo army in several battles. Eventually, the Numpe sacked the capital and destroyed this Oyo in around 1535. His ruling house took refuge in Bogu, and the surviving inhabitants scattered around smaller settlements, marking the end of that Oyo. After around 80 years, it has ceased, all your people scattered around, 
built a new army consisting of all soldiers or rather cavalry, and advanced shield. The fought the Numpi and regained their territory. They took a new capital, different from the previous one, and they called it Igbo. So, while the new Oyo was called Oyo Igbo, the old one is Oyo Ili. Oyo kept fighting Numpi to make them weak and retired them from attacking Oyo again in the future. Time passed by and Oyo grew strong and prosperous among other kingdoms they subdued. Most of them Yoruba entities. To their east, they went as far as trying to conquer Bene Kingdom, but their cavalry unit find it difficult to cross the mountains at Ekiti, so the campaign was altered. To the west of them, they stretched to the Ewe, Aja, and Daomi, in modern-day Bene Republic. Oyo did kept on this quest of expansionism as far as it could. For example, it raided some kingdoms, and the soldiers had to retreat as soon as their supplies were finished, because Oyo find it difficult to supply its army fighting in a place too distant from Oyo. Oyo also achieved some military feats by helping or making use of armies from the territories they had conquered. For example, they defeated an Ashanti army by supporting the soldiers of Akiem and Daomi, who were being invaded. In 1784, they also did the naval blockade of Badagri, with forces gathered from Daomi, Lagos and Oyo. They didn't really rule over most of the kingdoms they conquered. Most times, they assigned Ajele, like a district officer, to some and collect tributes, while they collect tributes only in other places. Oyo produced so many powerful people who were feared for their magic. One of them, Ga, a military leader, was so powerful that he successfully insulted and dethroned several Oyo kings who were laughing. Starting with Alafin Labisi, Labisi was nominated as king. His supporters were executed and he was not allowed into the palace. He committed suicide because of that. That was 70 days after its nomination. He installed Ojuboyi as king with the condition that he prostrates to him every morning. Kings don't prostrate to anyone in Yoruba land, but Ojuboyi agreed. And after 130 days, he stopped doing that, and Ga killed him. After this, he installed Aboluaje. During his reign as Alafin, Aboluaje celebrated the festival. At the festival, one of the invited kings dressed better than him and changed his clothes several times. Ga was angered that how can an invited guest dress better than the Alafin? So, he declared war on the invited king. Aboluaje won the invited king of the war, and the invited king escaped to Numpe. After Ga find out what Aboluaje had done, Aboluaje committed suicide to avert his punishment. After this was Majogbe. One day, Majogbe's son had a street fight in Ga's neighborhood, so Ga decided that Majogbe himself pays with his life. After him was Abiodun. Abiodun did everything to please Ga. He even married his only daughter to Ga with the hope that he wouldn't attack his father-in-law. But one day, something that shocked the whole of Oyo happened. Ga needed to use an animal called Agoni in English, a deer for his charm, and he couldn't find it in time. He looked at Abiodun's daughter, whose name is Agboin, and thought that since their name sounds similar, he could use her too. He pounded her for his charm. When Abiodun heard of this, he was broken, so he secretly asked for help from several warlords and kings, including Arie Onokankafo, Oyabi, who was the warlord of all Yoruba land. Oyo people were also boiling with anger with Ga's deeds. 
With all this help, Abiodun destroyed Gar's house and his families, while Gar himself was captured and put to death. A laughing Abiodun couldn't stop there, he went ahead and destroyed all the properties of other great warriors that had something to do with Gar in order to prevent coup or sabotage of the office of the Alafi again. This was in around 1774. Gar was gone, but it has some after effects. The effect is that Oyo had weakened its military by attacking other war houses too. The act would also cause disobedience and betrayal to the throne in the future. This small civil war would be a foundation for the fall of Oyo that would gradually happen over the next 60 years. Firstly, after the incident, Abeldu lost two wars, one to Bogu and the other to Numpe, as both kingdoms liberated themselves from the tributary pain states of Oyo. That was around 1789. Abeldu was eventually killed in a coup by Awole, who became the king. During Awole's reign, there was another growing powerful warlord called Afonja. Awole saw him as a threat due to what Ga had done in his family's history. So he sent Afonja to live in Iloin. That was not enough because he wanted to see Afonja dead. So he also sent him on impossible wars. When Afonja realized this, he told Awole to commit suicide or face the destruction of his family. Awole committed suicide at the end. The effect of this second warlord king fight is that, after the demise of Awole, it was impossible to find a successor to the throne, as king makers clashed over different candidates. Oyo remained without clear king for like six years, and eventually, when they got a king, Afonja turned his back and Ilorin on Oyo. Afonja controls most of Oyo's cavalry and they remained with him in Ilorin. Bogu and Numpe used to be the root of Oyo's oil supply, but since they freed themselves from Oyo under a building, they had blocked Oyo's steady supply of horses from the north, thereby reducing the strength of Oyo's cavalry. Many tribute paying states started revolting and freed themselves. For example, Daomi under King Gezu and Egba under Lishabi. After a while in Ilorin, Afonja had gotten issues with Alimi, his Fulani friend, in Ilorin, and he was killed, while Alimi took control of Ilorin from him. Alimi wanted to expand Islam to other states. So he launched a series of wars against kingdoms like Numpe, Bogu, and Oyo was not spared either. Oyo army, with almost no cavalry fighters, crumbled in the face of the jihadist horses and long spears. During the war, Oyo king called Uluewu formed alliance with Bogu kings to repel Fulani's attack and recaptured Ilorin. The alliance was betrayed by Oyo generals. Oyo generals and the soldiers they commanded deserted. The king's army and Bogu army went on with the war, where five of the six Bariba kings died. Oluewu himself and his prince were killed in the war. The war of that particular alliance was called Iliduwe War, and after they lost the war, Oyo fought. That is in 1835, ending the second Oyo. Oyo inhabitants remained scattered for a few years. They moved southward, far away from Ilorin, to settle in the current site today under the new king called Atiba. This new Oyo is called Oyo Atiba. So, Oyo got weakened by its own weight and fell at the feet of the Fulani Jihadists. Re-established southwards is not really going to save it from its last problem because the Fulani haven't stopped the advancement. Anyways, the Alafin was wise 
as he sought support of experienced fighters from his surroundings to guide his region. One of them, Ibadan, which is more of a military barrack or settlement. In the year 1840, Ibadan army combated the Fulani army in Oshogo and defeated them, thereby stopping the advancement of the Fulani southward. This way, Ibadan emerged as the new central power. 